What's up, Key Issues? We are back with a follow-up to our video. It was pretty popular with our subscribers titled The Top 10 Comic-to-Film Redesigns. Except this time we are entering the nightmare timeline. We are heading to a world where no enjoyment is possible. We are entering the Forbidden Zone, a zone of terror and entropy where only the worst of the worst costume redesigns are allowed to live. Now keep in mind, we will not be including characters whose costumes just really didn't work on screen, like in 2011's Green Lantern film. You know, that costume was fine, but the technology and the application was really bad. Or somebody like Killer Croc, who looks terrible, but is very accurate to his early appearances, so it's not technically a redesign. So today, we bring you the top 10 worst comic-to-film costume redesigns. Number 10 is Galactus. Now, Galactus is a character that surely can't be easy to make work on the big screen, and when Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer came out in 2007, we knew that he was going to be involved somehow. After all, you can't have Silver Surfer without the cosmic entity that created him. Now, the marketing machine back in 2007 wasn't quite as prone to spoil every aspect of a superhero film during the trailer, so fans went in without a lot of knowledge, but optimistic that Galactus would show up. Then, a giant space fart cloud showed up on screen, and it was a little bit too much to handle. And yes, in the Ultimate Universe, Galactus, better known as Galactus, is actually a giant swarm of space robots, and maybe that's what they were using for the inspiration here. But 2007 comic book fans weren't ready for a ginormous purple alien god, so we got the next worst thing. His space fart. Hard pass, Fox. Thanks for giving the rights back to Marvel. Coming in at number 9, we have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The redesign for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles effectively ruined everything about what made the original live-action film so great. The original designs were partially animatronic, and they were a lot of fun. These new turtles were entirely CGI, and they don't look like any teenagers I've run across. Most teenagers are not 900-pound human wrecking balls. These are truly terrifying abominations. They look more like Mr. Olympia competitors than actual teenagers who are mutants and who also happen to be ninjas and also turtles. And as for the ninja part of their name, how are these creatures going to sneak up on anyone? They're massive. You can see them from orbit. Damn you, Michael Bay. At number 8, we have Lizard from The Amazing Spider-Man. This character in the comics, video games, and animated TV show is pretty awesome looking. Giant lizard. Check. Sharp teeth. Check. Lab coat. Check. This should have been an easy Inside the Park home run, but instead, we got whatever the hell this thing is. It looks like a Goomba from the Mario movie, but with a giant tail. Bonus suck points for the fact that his motivations in the film make absolutely no sense. He decides everyone should become a lizard, so... He tries to make everyone a lizard. Great A writing, Sony. No wonder you're sharing the rights to Spider-Man now. At number 7, we have the X-Men. Now, this is probably going to piss a lot of people off, but you know what? I don't care. It has to be said. The original X-Men costumes are horrible, and they encompass everything that was wrong with comic book films during the early to mid-2000s. The X-Men had 50 years of costumes to draw inspiration from by the time they had landed on the big screen, but Fox avoided all of that and stuck them in the most bland, generic leather costumes of all time. Each costume carries a legacy of incredible comic book moments. It should not have been that hard to adapt these to the big screen. Unless you're going to a 9-inch nails concert, you don't need to wear a full leather outfit, I promise you. Also, just a side note for anyone who has ever worn leather, not the most tactical thing. The X-Men need to be able to move around, and leather isn't the best thing for activewear. Not that I would know. The inside of those costumes probably smelled like a wet dog by the end of shooting. Hopefully they paid the stagehands extra money to incinerate them. Number six is basically every single costume in the Joel Schumacher Batman films. And what can I say about these costumes and these movies that hasn't already been said? 
The whole film is a visual nightmare. Batman has a silver cod piece. Robin has nipples. Batgirl shares virtually no similarities with her comic book counterpart except for the fact that she is, indeed, a girl. Mr. Freeze looks like he's wearing the world's largest vape, and Uma Thurman's Poison Ivy character just wore spandex because apparently they ran out of a budget for her costume. This franchise effectively killed Batman on the big screen for the next 10 years, but, you know, maybe it was for the best. Number five, we have Shaq Fu himself from Steel. Now, what the hell is this? Stop what you're doing. If you're just listening to this and not really paying attention, stop right here. Look at this picture of Shaq as Steel. This isn't even good by the standards of someone attending Comic-Con at a Holiday Inn in Southern North Dakota. They let him wear this. He chose to wear this. They continued to make this movie, and then it came out. How did this happen? What kind of world do we live in where somebody saw this and said, yes, that's perfect, cut the check. The real steal would be incredibly difficult to get right on the big screen, but no doubt it could be done properly with modern CGI technology, and most likely it would be awesome. But this, this is where properties go to die. This outfit is made of the same rubberized trash that the bat suits during the Joel Schumacher era wore, and every single movement screams, this suit is not made out of metal. The Tin Man from The Wizard of Oz, which was made nearly 60 years before Steel, looks better. That's 60 years of costume design and technological advancements thrown out the window to coddle Shaq's ego. At least they didn't let him star in a Superman film like he originally wanted. Shaq, I love you on the court, and there you were truly Superman. But on screen, you're more like Optimus Subprime. Catwoman clocks in at number four. And Catwoman has worn a number of costumes in the comics over the years, and they're all relatively similar in concept and execution. Black cat suit, usually goggles, sharp claws, a whip, you know, the classics. Almost none of these costumes are just a bra with some leather pants that are ripped up for some reason to be edgy and the stupidest cat-based mask I have ever seen in my entire life. This costume looks like it was a leftover prop from a Batman-based porn parody. Brazzers presents Catwoman. There is nothing to say that is even remotely redeeming about this costume. Halle Berry is a beautiful woman, but this costume and everyone involved in this film are bad people, and I will stand by that statement in a court of law. At number three, we have the cave troll from Lord of the Ring. Wait, wait, that's supposed to be Doomsday? Like, no, like Doomsday from the comic books, Doomsday, the guy that kills Superman? Look, I know Doomsday in the comics is fairly weird looking, but at least he's menacing, you know, he's massive. And don't forget, he's got that flowing mullet like Hulk Hogan in 92. But seriously, even in the New 52, when his look is updated, it's updated to give him more horns and just generally amp up the badassery. But in Batman v Superman, it doesn't look good at all. His face is shrunken in, his horns are like weirdly placed and look like odd growths. And I feel like someone at Warner Brothers just found an old hard drive with 3D renderings from Lord of the Rings on it and just started copying and pasting. Man, I hate the DC Extended Universe so much. Taking home the silver medal, we have Ryan Reynolds as Weapon 11, also known as Deadpool from X-Men Origins Wolverine. Hey Ryan, you still made the list despite Green Lantern not qualifying. Great job, dude. This costume is so offensively bad that Mr. Reynolds has spent the better part of the past decade atoning for his sins and righting the wrongs that Fox perpetrated against the now world-famous Deadpool character. Deadpool is one of the most recognizable comic book characters in the world, and he has been for a number of years, gaining a huge cult following for his unique humor and ability to break the fourth wall. And fans didn't ask for this. Only the most vague references to his costume appear in this design. They also gave him a shitload of powers that he didn't have before. Not that he needed them. 
the current Deadpool film series is a lesson in staying true to the source material. This Deadpool, this Deadpool is what you want. And this Deadpool is what happens when you don't stick to the source material. Seeing as our original video saw the Joker as the best redesign of all time, it's only fitting that the Joker is also the worst redesign of all time. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. The Joker from the Suicide Squad, or as I like to call him, Jokes Malone, is the worst redesign ever. The Joker in the comics and on film has had many redesigns throughout the years, however none of them until now saw the Joker attempting to imitate mumble rappers from SoundCloud. His corny tattoos, crocodile skin jacket, and complete lack of eyebrows is the embodiment of everything wrong with the DC Extended Universe. Every time someone defends this horrible costume design with, we all thought Heath Ledger's look was going to be bad, so we have to give this a chance. I have to pull out this picture and remind them of this mistake. Yes, Heath Ledger did do a fantastic job, but he also worked with Christopher Nolan, one of the most accomplished directors of our time. David Ayer is unfortunately not. And this version of the Joker is hereby crowned the worst comic to film redesign of all time. So that's about it for this little video. We hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to share it with your friends and family and to the people who made these films so we know that we hate them on a deeply personal level. And let us know who you think deserves to be on the list for part two. This has been Garrick with Key Issues, and remember the motto, it's comics over everything.